Greetings, everyone. Today we will talk about how to interpret Turnitin reports. But before talking about the skill, let's see what Turnitin is. Turnitin is a software created by the company with the same name to encourage the academic integrity or what some people may call deterring plagiarism. Although Turnitin is not the only software providing this service, Turnitin is in fact one of the most commonly used one by academic institutions. Turnitin may be used directly by accessing it from the company's website if you have an account subscription, or many times institutions purchase institutional access to these services and directly embed Turnitin into assignments, as you see in this picture. Then students submit these assignments in Moodle Room, Blackboard, Sakai, or any other LMS and are automatically checked for possible plagiarism. When submitting an assignment, go to the assignment itself, click on it, and follow the submission process. As soon as you submitted the work, the system will automatically turn in plagiarism check. And turn it in is going to start checking for any other previous online submissions that have similar formulations or similar work. While still in the processing mode, the system will show you a message that says document is queued, as you see in this picture. Sometimes this may take between 10 and 10, 20 minutes. That means that the report is still not complete. As soon as the document has been scanned, Turnitin will provide a report in PDF format with percentage score of possible similarity. Pay attention. The percentage you see does not necessarily mean that you have plagiarized, but that someone before you has published online work that contains similar or the same information. Plagiarism is considered when someone takes information from someone else and does not provide proper reference to the source and does not give credit to the source. Now, at this moment, we need to click on the percentage, the one that we've seen here, in order to open the Turnitin report. On the right side, we're going to see the Turnitin report in percentage. Click on this number to open the detailed report. If similarity is found only from one website, obviously you will see only one percentage and one and link to only one website. Still, if similarity is detected on various websites, as in this image, Turnitin will provide a breakdown of all the websites. You have to click on each one of these to see how information appears in your paper and how it appears in the online source. Now let's look at a few examples. In this case, for example, we have this highlighted portion which shows that information that appears in this paper also appears online in this particular source. That could be plagiarism, but we need to uh, analyze the details. If we look attentively, we see there is quotation marks at the beginning of the quote, and the quote ends with closing quotation marks and providing reference to the source. Therefore, that is not plagiarism. If we look at this example, we see that we have reference to various websites. However, when we click on them, we see that it gives us 
um, reference to expressions, short expressions or terms. Again, the probability for someone somewhere else to have used those short expressions or those terms is very high. Therefore, that does not refer to taking someone else's ideas, but just using the same terminology. Obviously, that is again not plagiarism. Let's look at this example now. In this case, we have a longer fragment that is highlighted. As we see, it appears in another online source that represents 5% of this paper. And when we click on it, it gives us the exact formulation that it appears in the online source and in our paper. They are exactly the same. But when we analyze this fragment, we see that it is actually verse. And the rule for verses says if you have more than three verses, they have to be entered as block quotations. Block quotations do not place quotation marks. Therefore, we do not have quotation marks here. Still, the author at the end provides reference to the source. Therefore, this is not plagiarism. Let's look at another example. Now, here we have a good number of fragments that are highlighted and a very high percentage of similarity. If we click on the first one, we're going to see that that represents 28% of this paper. And it is going to take us to these sections that have been taken from the other source. It also tells us that this is how the information appears in the original source. Then we see below how it appears in our paper. When analyzing it, we see that there is no reference to the source. There are no quotation marks. Therefore, that is a clear example of plagiarism. And that is wrong. Now, we also must keep into account that sometimes similarities may be linked to endless references. If that is the case, as we see in this specific um, slide that we, we have here, then obviously the system has detected these references because they do appear online. However, endless references are not considered plagiarism. I repeat, percentage related to endless references does not count as plagiarism. Thus, when submitting your paper, please make sure to check for any possible issues of plagiarism. Unfortunately, plagiarism is a critical issue and universities do take it seriously. Remember, when writing, always do the right thing. Cite your sources. Thank you for today. See you next time.